When it comes to gaining experience in technology, there's so much more that's often caught than taught. So I want to do something different in this video, something I haven't done yet on this channel, probably because I'm spending all my time teaching the technology and, and saying, okay, now, now go give it a try yourself and, and, and off you go, right? Um, before I tell you what I'm going to do, I want to tell you how I got here because there's stuff to learn even in that journey. So I'm Googling, right? 90% of the life of an IT administrator, either you're trying to solve something or learn something as you're, as you're going through the abyss of the internet. And I stumbled on this blog for a guy named David Nichols. And, and hang on, pause right there, because this is something I've said in, in many other videos. A lot of people are, have asked me, you know, how do I start in technology? How do I, you know, grow in technology? One of the Biggest points I will tell you is create a blog and create a discipline around it, whether it be daily, weekly, you know, something where you can, you can put together your experiences and say, okay, I'm going to quantify this not only for yourself and, and building that, that growth in yourself, but others. I mean, I would have never found David Nichols had it not been for this cool blog that he put together. So, 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 so I did what we all do. I'm, I'm reading this article. I'm like, this is really good. I'm like, and, and you go, who is this guy? And so I, I backed out and I clicked on the about me and it turns out he is the ICT operations manager for a school in Australia, right? All of my Australian I learned from the crocodile hunter um, for, called uh, Central Coast Grammar School, CCGS, right? And so I'm like, what's that? Because we don't have ICTs in America. So I look it up, information and communication technology. And so I'm like, this is really cool because many of you know, the company that I started here in America, the managed service writer, VIA, we focus on education and technology. I'm like, I, I want to learn stuff from, from this guy. So I, I try to set up an interview with David and I got not one, but two Davids uh, by the time it was said and done. Uh, David, ICT operations manager who implements a lot of the technology and David, the IT, ICT director who actually oversees a lot of the programs at CCGS. So, so I want I wanted to launch you into the interview. The interview was amazing. It ended up being about two hours and you're going to see just little pieces of it that, that I pull. I'm like, oh, this is so good. Um, so, so can I, can I give you this? This, this is going to, I want to set your mindset of what to expect before I start showing you some of these little clips. One day, they called it Monday D-Day. CCGS rolled out iPads for kindergartners, right? Microsoft Teams with more than a thousand channels prepared, uh, remote classrooms in Teams, like to where they're, they're using remote classrooms literally the next day after this, this Monday all for, for, for thousands of students, right? And, and uh, 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 OneDrive for departments, which is essentially SharePoint. One day, call it the Monday D-Day. So, so this interview starts, it, I'm gonna start it off, right as they were talking about, they, they ran into you know, scripting challenges as they were trying to generate these thousand Teams channels. So I'm gonna pick it up from right there. Um, and I want you, what I want you to be listening for, again, you gotta catch it. It's not something you can just tell. How did you do that? Like that takes a school, a business, potentially a year or more to roll out that kind of technology. How did you do that in a single day, right? I'm gonna come back at the end of this and, and give you some of my thoughts. I wanna see what you catch. So here we go. And I'm, I'm seeing the smile. Um, uh, but, but also using you know, like Microsoft Teams, I saw that rolled out you're in, and you posted like, hey, this is, uh, you know, this, this is now rolled out. And, and so I was just like, man, it seems like these guys are, are uh, are on it, even though you have a whiteboard behind you filled with uh, notes of here's what we should have done. But that's 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 actually great because um, what so no, 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 those, those notes are like what we did. It's just that I wrote them after we did it. You know, <laughs> like so <laughs> I was I was hoping that if anyone in your in your video stream, you know, zooms it up max res and tries to read what's behind. We're like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we knew all this was coming, right? Right, right, good. 15 minutes ago, Jeremy, that was full of my kids' stupid, you know, <laughs> jokes and, uh, you know, insults to each other. Well, well done. I'll, I'll cut all of that out and, and you can, we'll make it make it like this. This is the most uh, brilliant school we've ever seen. Fidel, Fidel is a moron. Zach is a prick. You know, that type of stuff. That, that's what was there 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Great. So, so, um, so let's, uh, let's, let's frame it just a little bit. Um, frame for me, w tell me a little bit about your school. Like, I mean, go, go with the core. Um, w what is the name of your school? How many students? And, and, and then just, just kind of give a, a perspective of 
COVID, now I know obviously the United States, how, how COVID hit here. How, how, did the, how did it affect you in, in Australia? Let me, uh, let me take that one, David, because uh, I reckon I can answer yep. the not technical ones really well. Uh, so we're, we're from Central Coast Grammar School. We're a uh, independent school on the Central Coast of New South Wales, just north of Sydney in Australia. And we have uh, about 1,300 students from kindergarten to year 12 um, and about 150 permanent full-time staff, um, of which about 120 uh, uh, teachers uh, or in learning support. So the majority of those 100 plus are teachers and then we have about 10 or 12 in a kind of a learning support teachers aid uh, team. So we um, regard ourselves as a pretty well balanced school. So we do a great job in performing arts. We do a great job in academics. We do a really good job in sport. Um, we also have a strong, you know, co-curricular program for growing uh, students, you know, a citizenship program. So we try and be a really well balanced school from that perspective. So we were one of the first schools in Australia. Um, it was about 19, well, our laptop program, a one-to-one -one laptop program started in 1995. Um, as far as we know, we were one of the first or equal first in Australia to do that. Um, so we've been, run, we've been running a one-to-one -one laptop program, um, not for every year, but uh, we started for years five, six, seven, eight, and nine in um, 1995. And then very quickly, it was an optional one-to-one uh, -one program for years 10, 11, and 12. About five years ago, that optional program for years 10, 11, and 12 became mandatory. Uh, and we also dropped the um, starting year for the laptop program down to year four. Um, so now we're all laptops years four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. School provided Windows 10 devices or Windows devices, and now it's Windows 10. And then uh, years 10, 11, and 12 could bring their own device. Uh, Macs and Windows were both allowed. So that was pretty much a 50 50 mix. Um, and then in years, one, two, and three, um, we have a one-to-one -one iPad program. So the only year that we don't have a one-to-one -one, um, device program was kindergarten. And I say it was <laughs> because as of about, you know, five weeks ago, Jeremy, we had small sets in the classroom, but when all of the uh, kids went home to do remote learning, we did a, uh, a massive deployment program to get them up to one-to-one -to -one so they all had devices. So as of today, we can say we have a one-to-one -one <laughs> from kindergarten through to year 12. Wow. So, so even to kindergartners, kindergartners are, are now in a one-to-one -one program that you guys rolled out. Was that during COVID? So, so we have had small classroom sets, six or seven in a classroom of like 24 or 25 students. And what would typically happen was the teachers would have different classroom activities. So one group might be doing uh, reading, another group might be working on a particular assignment, perhaps with some help from a teacher's aide, and then another group might be using those in-classroom iPads to do a particular uh, app. You know, it might be reading eggs, it might be mathletics, you know, those types of online um, learning tools. Yeah. So uh, they wouldn't be using it all the time. It would be the teacher's call um, some of those kindergarten classrooms also had uh, Windows computers. So uh, we're trying to get them to learn to type from a young age. And although now all of our iPads have a little uh, plug-in keyboard, initially we used computers for them to learn to type. So the teachers would kind of switch tools in the classroom as they saw you know, which tool was best for the purpose. But it meant by the end of kindergarten, the students were pretty um, familiar with both a Windows computer and an Apple iPad. Uh, and then they had a one-to-one -one device in year one, two, three. Uh, so they tended to concentrate more on the iPad. Teachers would take them along to like a computer lab, which had, uh, you know, 25, 28 Windows computers in it. And they might do some uh, different type of stuff because you know those computers have got large screens so they might be doing I don't know video editing on a much larger screen or they might be doing some type of online 
uh, tool, which you know might need Flash or might be Windows only. So um, they'd take them along and book them in. Yeah. So that was the kind of program that we had. But when we realised, thanks to COVID-19, that everyone was going home and suddenly needed to engage with remote learning, uh, we kind of scrambled. And, um, you know, great credit. We had a few spare iPads around the school. Our arts department had a few. The library had a few that they would loan out. And so we went to the heads of those departments and said, please, please, can we steal your iPads? wipe them and re-image and deploy them out to these kindergarten kids and we need them now because it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was great. They're, 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 the, they're the types of um, educators who understand the big picture. So they handed over their precious iPads and uh, that enabled us to actually, I mean, we were literally handing out iPads to our kindergarten students on March the 23rd, which was a Monday afternoon when the announcement was made that our school would switch to remote learning. So we were, you know, literally go like we told all of the year one, two, three teachers, please um, send the kids home today with their classroom iPad because these iPads are typically stored at school and charged in the classroom. So we dropped off a box of charges for every classroom and said to the classroom teacher, please hand out the student's iPad, give them a charger and a cable. And then we rushed off to the kindergarten rooms and said, hey, here's a bunch of extra iPads. Uh, let's quickly, you know, hand them out. Here's a charger and uh, you'll be given, you know, more instructions for teams and everything else. But at least now that you're going home, you've got your device. And we might have missed a few that parents came and picked up in the next day or two. But overall, that worked pretty well. So that was a good a good outcome. Wow. Uh, so just in that, you know, just kind of the the entry of that, I'm just like the, the logistics of what you guys were able to pull off. Uh, whiteboard or not, you know, I'm, I'm now, now, obviously as we're sitting here talking in hindsight, um, you know, it's, it's, it's easier. Well, here's, here's what happened. Um, but, but first off, I will say that that's amazing that, that, uh, in the midst of all this, it, so a few, a few things struck me in what you just said one. And, and one of the things that, that we saw happen here was the schools were like, all right, we're, we're going. And, and a, lot of a lot of them didn't even know, are we coming back? Is it, you know, is this a, like a, a, a weekend? Is this, you know, or, or, what is this? Um, and so, so once, once we started realizing what was happening, it was almost like there was a scattering. It, we, saw, we saw some of, some of the schools end up on Zoom. Some of them end up in, in the, the land of Google. But I, one of the things I heard you say again and again is, is you're like, we had our Windows machine. We had the iPads. It, like, it's, almost, it's almost like there was no question of like, uh, no, you're, you're, not, you're not going to Zoom or maybe you are going to Zoom. Or like, how, did you, how did you get everybody on the same page? I want you to hang on to that last statement that you heard the culture that we've worked so hard to build, because that's gonna be the topic of another upcoming video that I post, which is probably one of the most exciting things to me. I'm like, because I then asked the question, I'm like, how did you build that culture? How did you build a culture where you've got hundreds of staff members that receive and use this technology faster than I've ever seen before, right? Now, now I also wanna, I want, I wanna grab something else. My takeaway from this video, because I sat here and watched it like three or four times, because I was like, how did they do this? I, so how did, let me, let me give you the, the question I had. How did you get a Monday D-Day to be successful? Handing out iPads, rolling out teams with a thousand channels, implementing one drive for departments, moving from shared drives, right? And into the, into the cloud and setting up remote classrooms in a single day to be successful on Tuesday. I, you know, how, how did you, how did you do that? Now, now the easy answer that, that, that initially maybe you reached for and I reached for was, well, it was COVID, right? Of course you had to, the teachers had to accept this because they closed down the school. They said, you have to do remote classrooms, right? And so, so I sat there and I, I thought, you know, cause if you think about it, think about this, what CCGS did in a single day takes schools and businesses years, you know, months, if not year plus timeframes to actually roll out. So, so I thought to myself, can we do that without a crisis? Can we make our own crisis? <laughs> now I'm not talking about like doing anything crazy, but, but when I'm talking about, I mean, so there was another statement that I, that I, that struck me as I was watching this video, he said, they did it because they cared for the kids. 
the, the, the technology challenges of the future are going to be not so much with the technology, like the how to do it, because that's becoming easier and easier. It's going to be the adoption of technology. And what CCGS stumbled upon right here was some, some what I would call a magic formula. And I'm saying, can, can we take some of the magic off of it, right? Can we, can, we, can we say this might be a formula that we could use in the future without a COVID crisis? Can we set up something where the teachers who care so much for these kids, that was the statement that stood out to me. They, they did it because they cared about the kids. They don't want these kids not getting in that education, not getting the learning, right? So can we in the future without a COVID crisis, create something where we show the technology or we build a culture of technology that because our, our team members care so much about what they do, whether it be teachers caring about kids, whether it be a sales force caring about customers they're trying to deliver a product to, right? It, it, it doesn't matter. There's, there's a genuine care and concern that has to happen with it. Otherwise you're, you're, you're a heartless company, right? You, you're delivering some product that, that meets some kind of need. Can we leverage that to say with this technology, you can do that so much better. That's the question I have for myself and I have for you. Think about that. Is there a way that we can implement a crisis of technology that spurs adoption without needing a COVID-19? I have more thoughts on that, but I'll share that in another upcoming video. For now, keep it simple.